Welcome to Electron Line. The examples are beginning to get a little bit more complicated. We still have two capacitors. They are now different in size, 2 and 3 microfarads. The charge on them is 40 and 100 microcoulombs. Of course, the equations for definition of capacitance are still the same. But now we're connecting them positive to positive end. That means that the total charge at the end is going to be equal to the total charge in the beginning. In other words, the total charge, Q total at the end, is going to be Q1 plus Q2, which is going to be 40 microcoulombs plus 100 microcoulombs, which is 140 microcoulombs, which is the charge you'll have at the end. The 140 microcoulombs will be distributed somehow across the two capacitors. Now, what you need to look at here is say, well, even though this capacitor is bigger than this one, it has a lot more charge. It is most likely that some of this extra charge over here is going to move over to this capacitor. So what you're probably going to see is that a charge like this will move over here, adding a positive charge here, which means that it's going to repel an additional positive charge over here, which is going to be moving in this direction, coming over here, negating one of those negative charges. And of course, if the positive charge leaves, you'll have an additional negative charge there. So it looks like some charge is going to migrate from the right to the left like this, positive charge, and then positive charge is going to migrate like this until an equilibrium is reached. The way we can reach an equilibrium is to determine what the total voltage is across the or around the circuit. If we add up all the voltages together, we can say that going from here to there, that's a positive V1. Going from there to there is minus V2. That should add up to zero, or V1 must equal V2. And then if we go over here, we realize, using the definition of capacitance, that V is the charge over the capacitance. So here what we can say is that the final charge on capacitor 1, let's call it small q1, divided by c1, must equal the final charge on capacitor 2 divided by C2. And since we know the values of C1 and C2, we can write that Q1 divided by 2 is equal to Q2 divided by 3. Now we also need to figure out the relationship between Q1 and Q2. How do we do that? Well, what we can say is that Q1 is going to be equal to the charge it started with. It started with big Q1. And then, in our assumption, as charge moved from there to there, it added additional charge. And how much additional charge did it add? Well, it's going to add, hmm, it's going to add the initial charge that C2 had minus the final charge C2 is going to end up with. It's going to be the difference of the charge it started with minus the charge that it ended up with, that difference is going to move over here. So that's going to be the additional charge on C1. So we can say that's plus Q2 minus little q2. That's how much charge left the second capacitor, which will get added to the first capacitor. Now we also have a relationship between Q1 and Q2. So here we can say that Q1 is equal to big Q1, which is 40 plus big Q2, which is 100, minus little Q2. Or if I solve this for Q2, I can say that Q2 is equal to Q1. Oh, no, let me. What I've done is I moved Q2 over here, became positive Q2. Add these two together, that gives me 140. And moving Q1 over here gives me minus Q1. So here's the relationship between Q2 and Q1. And here's a second relationship between Q2 and Q1. I have two variables, two equations. I can now solve them simultaneously. I'm going to plug this Q2 in the equation over here. So moving this equation this way, I can now write that Q1 divided by 2 is equal to Q2, which is 140, minus Q1 divided by 3. Now we just need to cross multiply. So 3Q1 is equal to 2 times 140, which is 280, minus 2 times Q1, which is 2Q1. Moving these, these over here, we get 
5 Q1 equals 280, or Q1 is equal to 280 divided by 5. That would be 56, and of course, that would be microcoulombs. So Q1 is now known to have 56 microcoulombs on it when it's finished. That means it started with 40 and 16 additional microcoulombs migrated from C2 to C1. Now, of course, we can calculate Q2. Q2, which is equal to 140, minus Q1, which now becomes 140 minus 56, or Q2 is equal to 84 microcoulombs. And there is the solution we're looking for. The final charge on each of the two capacitors, after we connect them, positive to positive, negative to negative, and starting with the initial charge of 40 and 100 microcoulombs. And that's what happens when the capacitors are not the same size. They end up with a different amount of charge. And that's how it's done.